Honestly, if you called it anything other than Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I probably would have enjoyed this movie much more. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda, and you're watching Swell Entertainment. And for those of you that aren't aware, I love horror movies, but specifically, I love slasher movies. I love Texas Chainsaw Massacre, okay? I love the original. I think it's great. I think it's literally when you think slasher movies, you think of Leatherface, okay? And that is why I knew this movie was not going to be good. <laughs> and before I jump into my overall criticisms of this movie and just start going through it for you guys, I wanna say, because I already me talking about this on Twitter and other platforms, um, I have people commenting, I liked it. It was fun to me. That's fine. At the end of the day, for this movie, between you and I, you won. Because you watched this movie and had a great viewing experience. You won. You win. The end. I recommend not watching this movie, this video, any further. You enjoyed a movie. Don't let me try to convince you otherwise. I am simply making this video to share why I had issues with this movie and why I did not like it, okay? Okay. If you want to comment that you still like the movie, regardless, go right ahead. It helps boost me in the algorithm. Thank you. It's appreciated. But like, I'm not here. I don't make these videos to change your mind about a movie. I am here to complain about a movie that I did not like and my reasons for not liking it. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was put onto Netflix. It was not made by Netflix. It was sold to Netflix. Let me first start by saying that a lot of my issues with this movie come from them framing it as a direct sequel to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre from the 70s. That is a majority of my issues because if you're treating it as a direct sequel, one, every other piece of media associated with Texas Chainsaw Massacre goes out the window, fine, including the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 and then 3. That is fine, we can ignore those, okay? But there are certain things <laughs> that that then means for this movie. And I feel like they just kind of said that and then they're like, cool chainsaw guy. Let's just bring him back 50 years later and we'll call it a sequel and we'll bring back the lone survivor even though, <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll talk about Sally as well, because I have thoughts. They did that girl dirty, jeez. This leather face that we see is Bubba 50 years later. That's the same leather face. They basically made it so that he is like Michael Myers and Leatherface, and that that's the same person, which is just not the case. He's not Michael Myers, and then he skins people's face and wears it as a mask. That's just not, no. It's not Leatherface, okay? Anyway, here's the synopsis on IMDb. After nearly 50 years of hiding, Leatherface returns to terrorize a group of idealistic young friends who accidentally disrupt his carefully shielded world in a remote Texas town. Who said they were influencers? I think it was critics. And I'm assuming it's because of the one line in the trailer that says, make one move and you'll be totally canceled, bro. No, they're not influencers. They're gentrifiers. They're gentrifiers. Um, everyone on the bus was an investor. They're not influencers. Uh, the whole shtick of why they are in Harlow, which is the town, the main group of people, they're working with the bank to sell off the various buildings that were in foreclosure or in bankrupt, et cetera, to various investors to try and breathe life back into Harlow to make a utopia for um, young people to leave the hustle and bustle of their lives to start fresh and settle down. It's a cult and the mechanic slash contractor guy calls it a cult. He was fun. I liked him. I think he could have been killed better, but that's just me. He calls it a cult. It seems like a cult. I don't know why they didn't just try and go full cult. Cause I feel like Leatherface killing a bunch of cult members, that'd be fun. Why can we have that? But no, we had to do like, it's Gen Z, you know, like we had to do that. But they're not influencers. That one dude's just a dumbass apparently who sees the guy with a chainsaw and thinks that someone being canceled is enough to not have you be fucking cut with a chainsaw. So that was just stupid writing, frankly. Um, but no, they're not influencers. They are on social media. They talk about blowing up, but there are restaurant tours. Like that's the thing, like they had a food truck. Like just because someone, a character uses social media does not make them an influencer. Okay. Is that, or is the point landing? Is it? Yeah, marketing on social media is a part of how a lot of businesses market these days. That doesn't mean that every small independent business is then an influencer. If you really wanted to do like the influencers, then maybe they're buying up the town to turn it into a tourist spot. 
that's then going to also be an Instagram photo, certain things that could be changed here that would make it work. It just doesn't work the way that they try to phrase it as influencers. So it looks like the uh, trivia section was like wiped from IMDb. August 24th, 2020, initial directors and brothers, Ryan and Andy Tohill split. The project due to the film's first week of production in Bulgaria. The duo was replaced by David Blue Garcia, who scrapped and reshot the previous footage. The first Texas Chainsaw movie to feature the original's main character, Sally. However, in this film, she is played by Olin Furrer as the original Asheron. Marilyn Burns tragically passed away on August 5th, 2014. So you bring the character back. Obviously, it's a different actress because you have to, unfortunately. I think they did a disservice to Sally. I really do. But we'll talk about that later. So the problem with this movie mainly is that they don't seem to understand Leatherface whatsoever. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it follows Sally, her brother Franklin, and their friends as they are going to check on, I believe, their father or grandfather's grave because there was a string of grave robbings. So people were going to check on their family members to make sure that their grave sites were not not disturbed. They find that it's not disturbed. They start leaving, but then they decide, hey, let's go check out the old house. Go check out the old house. It's in disrepair. One of the couples decides they're going to go to a watering hole. They get distracted. They go to a house instead. And if you walk into some stranger's house, that's on you. But they go inside this house because they hear noises. And we get single-handedly one of the greatest killer introductions of all time of Leatherface in that moment. There's no music. It's just quick. It's terrifying. It's fucking amazing. It's high art. But that's how we're introduced to Leatherface. He goes and gets the other girl, puts her on a meat hook. It's just slowly one by one, he starts picking off the rest of the friend group. You see how it's not that he's not good at killing. It's that he is awkward and anxious and panics because, oh no, there's more of them. And so after he kills Sally's boyfriend, very quickly, he starts freaking out and like looking around, like, is there more? Oh no, what am I gonna do? What's gonna happen? He's not this cool, calm, collected serial killer. He is kind of a giant dork. He's just crazy. And he's at the will of Drayton and Nubbins and Nubbins is his brother and also kind of crazy. Crazy, they're all, they're all crazy. Drayton, I believe is also his brother, but he's much older, but they call him Cook. And they also say that he doesn't do any of the work. He's just a cook. Nubbins and Bubba, Leatherface, are the ones who do all of the killing because Drayton doesn't take any pleasure in killing. At the end of the movie, everyone's dead. They're going to kill Sally. They have Grandpa, who's like basically a corpse, but is also like alive, but just super old. They're trying to ha- help him kill her the way that he used to do in the meat plant when he would kill the cows. So they're gonna hit her on the head and kill her. And they're trying to help grandpa do that. They can't, so they go to take the thing from him. And then she wiggles away, jumps out a window, runs. Bubba goes after Sally, so does Nubbins. Nubbins gets run over by a semi-truck. I think he's alive in the second one, if I'm remembering correctly. I rewatched the first one, but not the second one because I didn't want to mess with that. But he, we can assume that he is dead, okay? He was run over by a semi-truck. He gets tumbled as a whole thing. The semi-truck driver and Sally try to escape from Bubba, but they get out. She gets into a truck. Bubba's dancing around with the chainsaw. Sally laughing maniacally because she's alive. She survived. Her friends and brother and boyfriend are dead. You know, like it's the, it's the terror, but it's the, I lived, you know, psychologically breaking. And we saw that earlier on in the film when she is sitting at the table and basically being told that they're going to kill her and she's just sitting there with them. You know, like we see that, we see that psychological torture of being the final girl basically. And so that's the end of the movie. And then now this movie is taking place 50 years later. Throughout the movie, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I believe we see Bubba in three different masks. The mask he's wearing when he's killing everyone. The mask he wears when Cook is like scalding him for leaving the house and Nubbins leaving him alone and him making a mess of the girls and all of that. And it's like, where where are they? And he's like trying to explain like, oh no, they're here. I did good. I don't get mad at me. Like he's explaining, but he, he doesn't talk fully. He's like squeaking in a sense and like explaining things. He's wearing one mask and then he has a different mask that he wears to dinner. And that's the mask that we see at the end of the movie. That's the one with the makeup and everything on it because he likes to look pretty. He wants to look nice. He has various masks for different things. He has his killing mask. He has his everyday mask. He has his dinner party mask. And you know what? Good for him. Be the best you. When the trailer first came out for the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I had issues with it, okay? I was like, the mask looks like shit. And in the movie, it makes sense why the mask looks like shit because, okay. (sighs) 
The movie starts with Melody, Lila, Dante, and Ruth coming to Harlow, okay? On the way to Harlow, they bump into Richter. Melody makes a comment about someone carrying on a big gun and what are you compensating for? And we find out that Lila is a survivor of a school shooting. She was shot, okay? It's very, okay. It's an interesting choice to use being the survivor of a school shooting as like a character motivator in a horror movie. Interesting. They are on their way to Harlow because they are basically turning it into uh, what Dante calls Dante Topia. It's basically just going to be like a new town. They're breathing life into it. Again, they're gentrifiers. They're like, we're going to give it a facelift and sell it off and X, Y, and Z. All these young, hot people are going to come in and make restaurants and look how much money we can make from a food cart that we did here. And we're going to make it a restaurant here. Like that's what they're, they're, it's a cult under the guise of gentrification. <laughs> okay. That's what it is. Okay. They're, they're bringing in investors. They go and they find out that Richter is the contractor. And so they're stuck there while they're there, as they're walking through Harlow and they're talking about the town and all of that, they see that there is a Confederate flag hanging off one of the buildings. Choices were made with this movie. I mean, they're in the deep south of Texas, but still, um, I think choices were made because they tried to make a lot of commentary and I don't think a lot of it worked out, but Dante's like, okay, we'll go get it down. They walk into this house, but they also are under the impression that it's, they own everything currently. Like everyone's been evicted who was still there. So they go into this house and they go to get the flag down. When they're there, they find orphanage woman. You had someone wearing this woman's face and you have the audacity to not even put her in the IMDb page. What the fuck? The woman who is the owner of the orphanage and took care of all these boys is still living there and she's on oxygen and she's still like, I can't leave. Like, this is my house. The stuff with the bank got all worked out. I have the title to the house. And they're like, no, we have the title. That's not possible. As they are talking, the cops show up because they're going to escort her out because you're supposed to leave. It's like a whole, it's, it's upsetting, but it happens so quickly that I can't even like, it's confusing the way that it's done. I do think there was a way they could have done this where it is more like, Hey, fuck all of you, you know, like that. I think there was a way to do that, but I don't think it worked out. Then we just see Bubba standing at the top of the stairs, Leatherface, she just calls him my boy or whatever. It's the last of the boys. And she says, that's why I can't leave. This is the home he knows. I can't leave because I need to take care of him. She like throws up. She's having a panic attack or a heart attack because again, they're kicking her out of her home. And I'm assuming they were trying to make it seem like she believes that she's the only reason he's not murdering people. They are like, okay, we're gonna take her to the hospital. The cops are gonna escort her. Leatherface is gonna go with her, but obviously they don't call him Leatherface. And I don't think they call him Bubba at any point. Yeah, he's in, even in here, it's on Leatherface. It's Bubba. That's who it is, okay? We never really see his face, not really. It's always in shadow, his hair's in his face. There's no personality to Leatherface whatsoever in this movie. Whereas I think the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre gave Bubba a personality. Ruth, who is the fiance of Dante, is like, you guys can't leave because the investors are, like the investors pull up as they're leaving. Like you guys can't leave and someone needs to go with her. One of us should go with her so she's not alone with her, her son. On the way, leaving Harlow, um, she dies. The woman dies. The old woman, mama dies. Bubba is like trying to desperately to get her to like breathe the oxygen. And again, I think a little more franticness would have been good. A little more panic. Maybe even hell, shake the woman. I don't know. Something that implies that he might be a giant child. I don't know. But the sheriff that's back there with them stops him and is like, it's fine. And then so he goes to reach for his gun because that was terrifying. Leatherface is Michael Myers, apparently. Um, again, just takes his wrist, snaps the bone, and then stabs him in the neck with his own. What is this? This isn't a femur. I'm an English major. Stabs him in the neck with his own arm bone. Compound fracture just to the neck. As they're scrambling, gun goes off and shoots the other guy in the face or the neck. They crash into a tractor thing in the middle of the field. Ruth is out. They're all unconscious. The guy in the back is dead. Woman's dead. Bubba then takes the woman, drags her out, and skins her face off and just plops it onto his. That in conjunction with how he acts later when he gets back to Harlow implies that he does this because he is trying to like pay tribute to her, be her, bring her back to life. Not that he wants to be pretty, wants to hide his face, X, Y, and Z. There's implications versus the source material. Again, so it's like, 
And before someone says, yeah, they made things different, then don't call it a direct sequel. What we got doesn't fit. They were cannibals before this, okay? They ate human meat. There's no cannibalism mentioned in this whatsoever. I don't even think he consumes human flesh at any point in this movie. So are we, is he just not a cannibal? Is he just not a cannibal now? And then also like, he's just been a good person this whole time, or was it because he cared about her? He wanted to make her happy. That's one thing, because if she did, if that was the case, then wouldn't you think there would be a little more like fight for himself because she passed away and all of like, I, I don't know. I feel like there's, there's certain things that were introduced and then they're like, oh, this is his reason. It's a revenge story. And I'm like, one, you do know there are other motivations for storytelling than just revenge. Just saying, sometimes people are just crazy. Sometimes people just want to be cannibals and they like killing because that's his whole thing. He liked killing. Doesn't make him ex machina of fucking uh, cannibals, okay? <laughs> Jeez. Drayton wasn't dead at the end of the original. Neither was grandpa, okay? He was barely alive, but he was alive. So is this directly, they went on the run and she took him in? Did Drayton just say, hey, fucking good luck. I'm Audi 9000, go fuck yourself. And then he went in and lived there to hide out from the terror that he had caused of Sally getting away and his family being upset. Cause I think that alone, he would be against anyone being like, I'll take care. Like, I feel like that, like there's hostility that would come with someone trying to be like, I'll be your mother, you know? Like there's certain things that could work here that you have the groundwork for that are just not working. Anyway, we get that one scene from the trailer of him standing up wearing the woman's face. It would be way better if it wasn't done in 0.2 seconds. It's so quick. Side note, the mask looks like shit because it's just literally slapped onto his face. That would not stay, especially everything that's going on. It would fall off at some point. It'd be interesting if at some point when he gets the chainsaw, he gets on a different mask. Like he secretly held on to all of his masks. He's been taking care of them. He's been hiding them. But no, anyway, he goes back to Harlow. Oh, he kills Ruth, like just cuts her in the stomach, kills everyone and leaves. Ruth gets off a radio call though. And so someone at the gas station is like, here's the call. And it's like, he's wearing her face and he knows it's Leatherface. So he says, get me Sally Hardesty because she's been a ranger. We are then introduced to Sally in this movie. She is butchering meat in like a slaughterhouse in a barn area. Listen, trust me, if me and my friends went on a road trip and then I was the lone survivor and I and all my friends were killed or about to be killed, speaking about us and about people like they were meat to be butchered when also talking about butchering animals, at the very least, I am a vegetarian now. I would never touch, I wouldn't be able to look at meat ever again, okay? You wanna get me to be a vegetarian? That would do it. I think her working with meat, consuming meat, that, that, I, I don't, I disagree, okay? And before someone's like, become the thing you were fighting. No, I don't think so. I think the most consistent, the logical evolution of surviving something like that is you are now a vegetarian. And so anyway, she's been on a, 50 year revenge mission because apparently no one knows anything other than vengeance. Ruth had sent a text to Melody when the woman died in the car before everything went to shit with Leatherface. They know that the woman died. They know that they, what they did trying to evict her from her home caused her to have the attack that caused her to die. So they are talking about like, oh, dude, we can't do this. We need to get everyone out of here. I'm taking my sister and I'm leaving because Melody and Lila are sisters. Dante's like, no, we're not leaving. It's it's a, it's sad. She was old, She but she didn't live in the house. Like Dante's kind of a dick. Then Richter shows up and takes their keys, takes the bus keys, so they don't have the keys to their Tesla or the keys to the bus that all the investors came in on. And he's like, I heard that lady died because of what you did. Prove that you owned the house or you're not getting these keys back. They now go to where they have all the deeds and all the paperwork and they're looking for the title of the house that she was living in with Bubba. They do not find it. And they're like, okay, so if, if you don't have it, it's in the office. Cause they say it's, oh, it's in the office. Then it's not gonna be in the house. So they go back into the house to look for the title. While there, Bubba comes back. Yay, kills Dante, like slash, like down, done. I thought he was dead. He should have been dead because there's no way this dude got up. He lost a lot of blood, I'm just saying. Melody sees and then goes and hides from Bubba, hides in the closet of the woman's uh, room. Bubba is still wearing her face. He takes one of her dresses out, holds it to himself in front of the mirror, goes to her makeup, starts putting it on his on the face.
I see, I think you thought you were doing something, but I don't think you did what you thought you were doing. It seems more like he's trying to bring her back versus he wants to be like her. You know, like it seems like he's trying to connect with her in a different way than like, oh, I want to be pretty because she was nice and kind and I can be good. I can be better. I don't have to kill people. I can still, like it's the, like there's something, there's something here, but there, it's not, it's not meshing. I don't think you understood the character. I don't think you understood even what you were doing with the plot based on what you started with. I don't think this worked. Bubba leaves that room to go to another room. She comes out of that room, tries to move around, cannot get out. Melody is like moving around, trying to get out of the house, but she's upstairs. She's still hiding. She manages to get to another room and gets under the bed because Bubba's coming back. Bubba starts hacking at the wall. He went to go get a hammer and he is getting out his chainsaw. Thank you for keeping the neon green, the yellow of the chainsaw. Cause if you changed the color to something better, I would have been fucking pissed. Why he wouldn't have more masks there. Why he wouldn't have something else going on there. I don't know. Also, why do you have to hide the chainsaw? I mean, I get it if you're hiding the murder weapon, that makes sense. But with everything based on what he was doing, it doesn't seem like he was trying to not get caught. I don't even think he would maybe even necessarily have that belief of not getting caught. Drayton would have that belief of not getting caught. I don't know. I don't know if that works for me. Dante gets up and starts walking out. He bumps into Richter and the bank lady, Catherine, okay, outside. They, this man's jaw gone. He just bleeds out and dies, okay? Richter goes in after, I think that's it, yeah? Richter goes in. Anyway, Richter gets inside the house. Melody is still hiding under the bed. So when Richter walks up, Bubba hides. Melody uses her foot to tilt the mirror. Richter's like, what? And sees Bubba hiding behind the door. So he's able to get a couple of shots in, but ultimately Bubba gets his head through a window and then manages to slice his neck on a piece of glass. And then he goes down and then he reaches for the keys because he sees Melody hiding and takes the keys out and like holds them out. Anyway, we then see him just brutally beaten. And again, they're gonna try to be like, well, he's not trying to kill them for food. He's trying to kill them because they murdered his mom. And I'm like, okay, but like, why did we do that? Like if anything, it would be like, okay, I need to take care of myself now. I don't know how to make toast. I should kill people, you know? <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, that's fucked up. But like, I don't I don't know, like there's certain things that would be like, logical is not the right word, but would fit the story more than just a revenge plot line. I'm sorry, it was, it didn't work, I don't think. Catherine has Lila on the bus. It's like, don't leave, don't leave. She just keeps telling everyone not to leave. At a certain point, you have to tell them, someone is killing people out there. We don't know what's going on. The bus is where we can all be safe and keep an eye on each other. It's not safe, but you know, they don't know that. But it's better than just, you can't leave. You can't leave. Tell them why. Explain why they can't leave. Because surely Lila, who was the survivor of a school shooting, which I didn't even touch on that. Yeah, we're, we're explaining that. She like picked up a gun that was in Richter's garage and had like a, like a little episode and like panicked and flinched and dropped it. So we know that guns at the very least obviously make her uncomfortable, okay? Which brings in a question later. Choices are made, but Catherine should have just said like, look, there's someone out there, it's not safe. I have to go get Melody. Melody said, stay. Like, I don't know, lie, tell the truth, something. I don't know. Melody is trying to escape, but also this is an old house. It's creaky as shit. Side note, he would have hurt her way sooner or he just doesn't care. There's one moment where he teleports. She like is on top of the stairs. She steps down, jumps down. And then he's just there when he was previously in a back bedroom. We would have heard that. That would have been scarier if we had heard the stomping footsteps than just him teleporting there. Like the stomping footsteps of, oh fuck bitch, you better move versus he is standing at the top of the stairs. So scary. Like, oh my God. God, I know I'm being a nitpicky bitch, but there were certain things that were done that I'm sure you thought were cool that just weren't. They just didn't work for the horror element of it all. Do you guys know what it's time for? It's time for questioning your choices in a horror movie, Dana. Because Leatherface gets her in the chest with like a hammer and she goes down into the ground, into the crawl space. We then get the chainsaw. She starts crawling. She tries to hide. Apparently Bubba can like telepathically tell where she is under the house because the chainsaw just keeps coming really close to where she is. But she doesn't stick to the walls. She just stays right directly in the middle of the crawl space. So the, the chainsaw is going through the floorboards, going straight at her. So instead of doing, no, 
She just keeps going until it slices through a pipe. Can they do that? And uh, sludge goes all over her. But then that's where Lila sees her and they get the thing open and they get out. They go into the bus and they're like, we have to go. She has the keys. I don't know why the keys aren't working. Leatherface gets on the bus. That's where we get the- Try anything you cancel, bro. Still stupid writing, that's my opinion. Anyway, so anyway, we get the massacre scene, obviously, which was cool. I just think that's, I mean, someone's coming out with a chainsaw. See, I have the power of hindsight in this, so I can't complain or criticize the behaviors of the people inside the bus because you're in an enclosed space. They've been drinking, they've been partying. You're not gonna make the most logical sound conclusions when there's a madman with a chainsaw coming at you in an enclosed space. And again, he's 6'4". I understand why someone's not like, oh, okay, while he's killing this person, I'm gonna go down and try and squeeze past because he came in one side, I should try and go that way. Uh, but no. At some point though, Catherine is able to open one of the side doors, like the windows. They couldn't have done that the whole time. It wasn't like it was stuck, it would just, and then she gets sawed in half, but you know, Lila and Melody lock themselves in the bathroom and they realize there's a skylight. Lila gets up, Melody can't because then the chainsaw comes through and she's like, he's just gonna get me. He reaches through, this is good. He reaches through and then like unlocks the door, but it takes him a minute. So she takes out the chainsaw corkscrew that they were selling at the gas station because of course it's 2022. They're going to profit off of the massacre from 50 years ago because it's a commentary on modern true crime, I'm assuming. Anyway, it's a corkscrew that Lila bought her, stabs it into his forearm. It just starts spurting blood but she just stabbed it. She didn't like twist it. Did it hit a vein? This is my issue with horror movies right now. It's like, I, I have no problem with gore, no problem. But like your injury to pain to survival rate needs to be consistent. I can have suspension of disbelief, but if some person dies from one wound and then a similar wound in the same area, a person is able to live through, fuck you, okay, no. Some, there's, there's very slight deviation with our organs, in my opinion. I'm also an English major, so I don't know fully, but still, I think there, I have questions. They are able to pull Melody up and then run. That's where they find Sally. She pulls up, she gets them in the car. And then Sally, a woman who survived a madman 50 years ago, who watched him carve up her brother in his wheelchair in front of her, who knows that they killed the rest of her friends that she was nearly killed by. She has no problem using these two young women as bait and potentially traumatizing them for life so that she can fulfill her revenge mission. Really? That I think, no, that's just me though. Maybe she is one track minded. Maybe she doesn't care. Maybe she's going the peacemaker route. She doesn't care how many men, women, and children she has to kill to kill Leatherface. <laughs> she says, you're the one he's after. He won't stop until he gets you. Why would she know that? He wasn't after you because you did something to him 50 years ago in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He was after you because he was hungry and you were pretty. That's kind of it. Like you were the last one of your friends who had seen what he had done. That's really, like he was keeping his family safe and making dinner and giving grandpa a chance to relive the glory days of killing cattle. Like that's it. It, it wasn't like you you did something to him and he was after you. So I don't know why you would assume that he's after them when they're just the two that lived. Like, I mean, now it'd be like, it'd be under sense, like you're the last two survivors. Okay, he's gonna get you. He's gonna come after you. Like, but it's not like he, you're the one he wants. Like that's, that doesn't make sense. Like the, the writing could have tweaked and it would have fit. It would have been fine. So she goes after Leatherface. They are in the car. They're just screaming. And she's just like stone faced getting her guns out. Leatherface pulls up with a chainsaw. And Sally is like, names off all of her friends and her brother. And then is like, what's my name? He didn't know their names. Why would he know yours? I'm just saying. Anyway, she gets a couple of shots off. And because apparently his butcher vest that he is wearing is bulletproof because this man, again, is indestructible. He is pure evil, a la Michael Myers. And so he can't die from gunshots. This man has shot seven. It's so fucking stupid. I'm sorry. I hate it. I hate it. He's not indestructible. He's just a doofus who is a cannibal. She gets some whips off, some one-liners, and then he just gores her with the uh, with the chainsaw, goes up her center, does the overhead lift. They're freaking out. And he like 
tosses her aside. They try to drive into him, but they crash. And then Melody is pinned with a pole in her leg and they know he's coming. They know that Leatherface is coming. Melody says, I'm the one he wants. I'm sorry I brought us here. He's gonna kill me right now. You need to go. My leg is pinned. You need to leave. You need to go home. Go, like you need to go right now. You need to get out. Here are the key, like here are the keys, whatever, go. Bubba walks up and gives her time to apologize. I'm sorry for what happened to your mom. She didn't deserve that. That was messed up, but we did. He's gonna kill her. But then she got the gun that Richter had showed her, but of course it's not loaded because we saw him unload it to make her less uncomfortable. So he comes after her, runs. He gets her out on the street. Sally is not dead, despite having probably at least one of her two lungs sliced with a chainsaw. Okay, maybe the spinal cord. She's able to cock a gun and shoot it. And then also reload it again for Lila. Tells her, you can't run because if you le let him live, he'll never stop haunting you. Anyway, then she dies. Waste of the character of Sally, in my opinion. But you know, she goes into like, what's the theater looking area that Bubba had ran into. And here's me questioning another choice in a horror movie, okay? Because I have spoken about this before with cryptids, animals that you're hunting, things like that. I assume that if I go into someone's house, if I go to someone's town and they're doing something and I'm trying to hunt them for whatever reason, they know the terrain, they know the space, better than I do because they live there. Bubba lives in Harlow. He went around when things were abandoned, probably has been inside that abandoned building because it's his town at this point. He's been there for 50 years, apparently. He, he had time to explore. She follows him into this abandoned building. And yeah, I would assume he would know something. Anyway, he leaves the chainsaw running, which is actually pretty smart to lure her out. And so he like tackles her into the water. They're grappling underwater because there's like, a, there was a hole in the roof that's a pool now. She gets out somehow and tries to get to the gun that fell down. He grabs her, it gets to the chainsaw. There's more back and forth. He takes the chainsaw and whips it at her and it gets her in the calf. This does not hurt her leg or her ability to run much. Anyway, long story short, Melody is okay. She had a pole in her leg, but she's able to walk now. Okay, I get it, adrenaline, sisterly love, but still. They tag team Leatherface. Uh, she like goes over and chokes him out. They get a couple of shots off. Again, somehow he's not dead from all these shots. Gets into the water, goes down. The mask never falls off his face, not once. If it had fallen off and he had like panicked and fumbled it for some, like, I don't know, give him something to fumble with. That'd be good. That's the character. But anyway, they think they've lived. Now it's daytime. They get in their Tesla. They're talking about going home. They're talking about leaving. This is still, I'm sorry. I don't mean to smile, but this is the funniest ending to a movie in a while. They think Leatherface is dead. They think everyone is dead. They get in the Tesla. They put it on autopilot mode because they're tired. They roll down the windows and the sunroof. Leatherface isn't dead. He comes in, grabs Melody by her hair, pulls her out of the window. The car is still moving. Lila jumps up. So she's leaning out of the sunroof, looking backwards as the car is still rolling. Leatherface just takes off Melody's head. She is decapitated and he starts dancing around with the chainsaw and the head while Lila screams and cries as the Tesla slowly rolls out of Harlow. Fade to black. It's so stupid, it's hilarious. I just started cackling. I was like, you're fucking kidding me, right? There was too much time left in the movie on Netflix. I was like, there's an end credit scene. This is a fucking Marvel movie, so of course there is. So I skipped all the way to the end and there is Leatherface walking down the road holding the chainsaw to the house to a house, his old house. It's not a requel, it's not a sequel, it's a real origin story, equal. That works. So I'm assuming we're gonna get more or they're gonna try to, hopefully they relearn the character of Leatherface. I just need to end it here. I just, hang on. I don't know where my severed arm is, but I do have a severed finger. Anyway, I hope if they do do another one of these movies, which based on some of the reviews I'm seeing, 
I don't think so, but we'll see. And then also some of the issues with the test screenings and the distribution and all of that. I don't think we'll be getting another one, but if they are to do that, I think they need to go back to the cannibalism. <laughs> the end bit where they're like, oh, he's walking back. This is the new Leatherface. He's going back to his old ways. They could have had him dragging one of the bodies or something or like sacks that are bloody. Like he's gonna get just right back to butchering, you know? Like I think that could work. He's gonna start up his new face collection. I don't know anything, but not what we got, okay? I just, I truly think that you like the idea of a man with a chainsaw. Maybe you did have a more set idea of what you wanted with, you know, Bubba, Leatherface, and the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I don't think that they translated well. I don't think that you knew fully what to do with the character past a revenge story. I don't know. I love, I love slasher movies. I love horror movies. I don't think we get enough of them. But I think that this would have been better. I would have received it better. Probably overall would have been better received if they just didn't try to put the name Texas Chainsaw Massacre to it and didn't put the name of Leatherface onto the character. And that's really it. Did you watch this movie? Are you watching this so that you don't have to watch the movie? Have you seen the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Are you a fan of Leatherface? Are you a fan of the original Leatherface? How would you have changed the portrayal in this movie of Leatherface? What else would we have called this? Harlow Homicide. We could have called it that. <laughs> anyway, let me know. Comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, the Swell Shenanigans podcast. Reminder, I have merch like that mug back there. Shout out to my patron. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also support me on Patreon, they'll be listed down below. Like someone on my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's going to be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. I'm just trying to understand how you watch the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And then you write a movie where he's like Rambo of butchers, you know, like I, I don't think that was the case. Part of what was scary about him was that he he was deadly but he wasn't brilliant about it. Does that make sense? Like that's that's the, like he was kind of a big doofus and he panicked and he freaked out and you realized, oh, he just doesn't know what else to do because someone's in his fucking house right now. So he's just gonna kill him. Like that's part of the terror. It's not like he's like, oh yes, I'm going to lure this young girl into this area with my chainsaw and then attack. Like, I don't think so. Thank you, Audrey Allen, Cameron Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Devin, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Feckles, Hopeless, Hollow, Joker, Ray, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Louise, Mad, Matt, O, Matthew, S, Meme, Lord, The Red, Michael, Michael, Jay, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tosh, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, Williams, Zendry's Wink.